Well, hello again. The sun is out, I can't believe it. This is the first time I've seen the sun in two and a half weeks. It may have popped out for, you know, an hour or two and gone back in, but that was it. This is great. Oh, man. What a wonderful, it's been nothing but rain and clouds, rain and clouds. Look at that old dog over there. He's just going crazy, having a good time out here. He said, this is good stuff. I need to get this yard mowed, but I'm just full of water everywhere. It's about, well, it comes over to the top of the soles on your shoes when you walk on out there, except for this little path down the center. Anyway, it's dry enough and uh, warm enough and sunny enough to get out there and let's do a little bit of work on the Thunderbird. Today, the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and remove this bushing back here that's been welded into this lower control arm. Now this lower control arm has been all de-rusted and it's been sprayed with rust deformer, that uh, reformer, that's why it's all black. Now on the other side, I finished it and you can see how nice and pretty it looks. It look nice down in there. Looks gorgeous. And this other side will look the same way, but I didn't want to do it until I get this bushing out because I have more rust up underneath that bushing that has to come out. I can't quite get to and I want to put the rust reformer up in there and to get that squared away. But we have to cut through these welds. Let me get down here a little closer. Each one of these welds. What happened was that fender that got hit on that car, this fits in the car on the passenger side. Back up here. And it got hit. The fender did. And it drove this lower control arm this way. And when that happened, this here went this way, and it broke loose the weld on the top. I don't know if you can see that or not. It broke loose the weld and created that space all the way around there where it's supposed to be nice and tight. But, you know, what I'm going to have to do when I get that bushing out of there, after I cut those welds and pop that bushing out, I'm going to have to figure out a way to get this, no, this one. This side here, you see the space all the way around where it broke? This thing here has to go this way, has to straighten up a little bit. So that's going to be an interesting task. You can see where it split the uh, metal also on that one side. Split it a little bit on the left and split it a little bit more on the right. I don't know. I may have to, uh, I don't think there's going to be any problem with that. But if need be, I'll take it into my buddy Joe the welder. He'll touch it up with a weld for me if need be. So let's go ahead and cut through. All I'm going to do is take my little moto, my little rotary tool here. I've got one of these super duper cutting wheels. You know, they really work. They really, it's just on and off. Pop them in, pop them off. You don't have to hardly work to get them into your machine there. I'm just going to start grinding it loose there until she comes loose. This one's already loose, but I'm still going to have to uh, grind it down even with the metal so it doesn't interfere with the new bushing going in. So let me get to work on that. I do believe that'll take care of it. Both sides have had the welds cut. Now I'll take it out, put it in the vise, and uh, bang it through from the other side. Now there's two ways of doing this. I can take this part of the flange right here. It's got a metal part all the way around it too. I don't know if you can see it. It's got a metal flange all the way around it as well as the rubber part. I can put a socket all the way around that thing. Unfortunately, I don't have a socket big enough. So We'll have to set it up here on top of our vise like this and just take my ball peen hammer over there and just start tapping away and hopefully it'll fall down through the vise or at least come loose enough to where I can get it out. Well, she just doesn't want to cooperate, so I'm going to have to bend this thing to my will. And uh, what we've got here, if I can get the light out of my own way. It started to come out just a little bit by tapping on it, and you can see I have a much wider space there now, but then she stopped. So, I don't know, you know, rather than hammer on it harder, I don't want to do that. Uh, I went ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and soak it for a little while with WD-40. I sprayed it on both sides. We'll let it sit there for a while. Maybe that'll help. Meanwhile, I've got an upper control arm to take care of. All right, let's see how she's doing. This is our last item, by the way. Everything else has been de-rusted. Let's see what she looks like. Oh, she's looking real good. Look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All I gotta do is wash her off now. Maybe, maybe look for a few little rust spots and some cracks, cracks and crevices. And then take it inside, wash it up, dry it down, and 
get some primer on it. The last item. Man, that turned out better than I expected. I brushed it, you know, two times during the process and uh, no effort, but I wanted to make sure everything was off. That looks real good. So for all you guys, you want a cheap way and you got some patience, cheap way to get rid of that rust, this is it. Now keep in mind, even after you uh, remove all the rust, wash it, clean it, and, and, uh, and you know, dry it up real good, you're still going to have to spray it with that rust reformer. There is still surface rust on there that, that only that rust reformer will get rid of. You saw that how black the upper control arm was. And, uh, it, but it also makes a nice base to put your primer on. You have to let that rust reformer dry 24 hours. So this is a slow, tedious, patient process, but it works. It works great. I mean, look at that. You saw how nasty that thing was when I first stuck it in there. Well, they say... Uh, Seeing is believing. The best part about using vinegar is it's biodegradable. Like when I'm all done, you know, when it just won't de-rust anymore, and it takes a long time to wear it down, uh, I can just throw it out in the yard. It's just vinegar, no problem. There's no, you don't have to worry about anything toxic. What is vinegar? Apple juice, I guess, or something, you know. Let's get this thing inside and wash it off, because between here and the house, believe it or not, it'll probably start rusting. Now that everything's been washed off and uh, cleaned off, you want to get as much of that vinegar coating on there as you can. You're going to get a coat of rust like this. You cannot, you cannot stop it. Yeah, no matter what you do, you're going to. It's going to automatically. Uh, I dried it off real good with a rag. Put it in the oven. Let it dry out in the oven. You're automatically going to get that surface rust beginning again. You cannot help it. So that's where this uh, rust reformer by Permatex comes in. Now watch what happens as soon as I spray it. It attacks that rust and turns it black. See there? Get a little bit of wind around here now. You need to spray it and get rid of that before it starts eating away again. Don't just put it back in your car or try to paint over it. Make sure you spray it. Now in a little while that whole thing will just turn really black just like you see it right here. The, the places where there weren't quite as thick it attacked it really quick it'll take a few a few minutes to go ahead and attack the rest it's really dark you can't see it but it's really dark already so we'll let it set for a while and then I'll come out and I'll hit it one more time I'll probably have to go down and pick up another can of this I hate to do that with this coronavirus business but I got to do what I got to do I guess I'll just run in real quick and run out and as expected it did bend to my will Get that baby out of there and uh, I'm going to have to clean this up a little bit run you know I've, I've got to put a couple of those grinding wheels on my uh, those sanding discs not discs but uh, sanding uh, tubes whatever they call them <clears throat> I'm going to put that on the on the uh, motor tool and kind of smooth down a few edges here just some really sharp stuff here that I could cut my hand on you want to be careful of that you know like right there it's pretty sharp right there it needs to be knocked down so I'll spend a little time, maybe, you know, 10, 15 minutes going over it, top and bottom. Then uh, we'll go ahead and repaint the whole thing and make it look good. Incidentally, I decided to go ahead and use the uh, front hub grease covers. I just had to tap out a lot of dents that were in them. Yeah, they look pretty good now. They're fairly smooth. And you'll notice that there's a hole in the middle. You know, one of our subscribers pointed out there's a hole in there. It's not supposed to be there. Well, that's wrong, guys. You know, when you talk about this sort of thing, you've got to remember this is a car that's 54 years old. You can't apply modern day stuff to what happened 54 years ago. Those holes were put in there at the factory. That's the way they were made, okay? It's now been 24 hours, and as you can see, all of the rust that was on this upper control arm has now been turned black, every bit of it. This is fantastic, you know. You, you think you got rid of it all, but that stuff shows you you didn't. So we're good to go on both sides of this. Really going to be in good shape. Now is the time to do the priming. I'm going to put some nice gray primer on that, and then I'm going to go ahead and spray it with nice gloss black primer and paint combination. That's what you're looking for, guys. This way you know you've taken care of everything, and that'll last forever. It probably would have lasted forever without it, but <laughs> I like putting that that uh, rust reformer on it makes a big difference in my mind okay 
You know, I've showed this in previous videos, but for those of you, you know, who may have just become subscribers, you may not have seen it. Uh, this particular primer, uh, the automotive primer is difficult for me to find anymore. So I switched over to this primer sealer by Rust-Oleum, and boy, this stuff works just as good, if not better. I like it because it covers fast. Watch this. Look at that. It just wipes it right out in no time. Now, I don't have to put it on very thick because... Uh, I'll be using this, uh, the can's about empty, it's uh, got primer in it also, black gloss primer. So I went out and I bought this uh, two times, uh, uh, or uh, double, I guess, protection, ultra cover paint and primer by Rust-Oleum. And this stuff is really good too, it also goes out really fast, it leaves a nice smooth finish. So we'll go ahead and finish this baby up, and all I'll have left to do is the other side, plus uh, our lower control arm there. All right, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and try this uh, Times 2 Ultra cover first. It covers fast. I like that, you know. It's not really that warm out here. It's, it's, it's uh, warm enough to paint, but it's still got a nice chill in the air. And I think we're going to have a nice looking uh, upper uh, control arm, just like we did on the other side, but it didn't look as good as this one's going to look. Look at that, will you? I am so impressed with this stuff. Man, alive. There it is. I'll tell you, that's, that's fantastic. It's, it's good for metal, wood, plastic. Let's flip it over and do the other. This is far better than the other side turned out. And of course, I didn't see this paint at the time. Don't even know if it was available. Let's flip it over and do the other side. Now that is a thing of beauty. I might just ask wifey if I can hang it on the wall in our living room. All right, let's get back to our idler arm, the bushing, and all that other stuff. I've got it all painted up, looking nice. Got it nice and shiny. Got a brand new cotter pin for it. Looks really nice. Now, how does it go back together? You'll remember that these things came off of it. This, uh, everyone told me this is a thrust washer. Okay, I'll take your word for it. I looked it up, and it is, in fact, a thrust washer. And all the soaking I did in the, uh, in the liquid wrench didn't do a thing to loosen up those little bearings if that's what they are. At least they felt like they were. I don't know. And then of course we have this little thing with the copper side. Alright now, <laughs> I don't know why I didn't notice this before. Sometimes my brain just doesn't kick into gear. Look at the size of the hole in this thrust washer. And uh, look, at the, look at the size of the shaft here. Now it would seem to me that they do not fit. They do not fit. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at the next two things. Now here you see the uh, Eiler R bracket for a 1966 Thunderbird. It's sold on eBay, but it's sold by Max Thunderbird. And you'll notice that the only parts that come with it is the nut, the castle nut, this big thick washer, and of course the uh, cotter pin. There are, there's no thrust washer, no copper plate to match it or to go with it. This is it. Now here's the mounting bracket sold by Thunderbird headquarters out in California. And you'll notice also they just have the castle nut, the thick washer, and the cotter pin. Now seeing that bracket offered by Max and Thunderbird headquarters, that still wasn't good enough for me. I wanted to see what it looked like on the car originally. Well, George, our good subscriber, George, up in Michigan. He is service, uh, what is his handle here? His handle is service technician. He sent me photographs, really nice guy. He sent me photographs of what his looked like originally. And there you have, you know, your, your uh, cotter pin, your castle nut, and your large washer. And then, of course, this is the uh, bushing flange. And he broke it down even further before he put it together. He said he took, he was the feller that was in the last video that said he took over 3,000 photographs of his car and it had been, uh, he had been working on it for 42 years. This is the kind of work he's been doing. He does excellent work. Anyway, uh, he has it all laid out just the way it should be. These are the nuts that go, the nuts and bolts that go uh, through the holes, these three here to hold it to the body of the car. Then of course you have your thick flat, flat washer and your castle nut. 
Well, that's right, folks. These two things right here were never part of the original setup on this idler arm. I don't know why they were put on there for spacing purposes, probably. I don't know. They had them laying around the shop. Whoever worked on it decided, oh, let's put them on there. They'll work, you know. <laughs> I tell you, if I didn't know better, I, I bet some guy, the guy that owned this car before us, he probably paid some guy to do that and didn't even know it. Stupid. Anyway, but that leaves us with this problem here. Now, this bushing is in pretty good shape, especially on the top up here. Looks real good there. Let me focus in there. There we go. It looks pretty good, but it is flattened out pretty far. I don't know, you know, once I slide that, uh, once I slide this uh, idler arm bracket rod down through there, mounting rod down through there, I don't know, I'm, I, there's a torque spec for uh, torquing this up, and we'll just have to see what happens. Maybe they torqued it and realized uh, they couldn't really torque it the way they wanted to, so they put those in there. Well, we're not going to do that. I don't know how to remove this bushing. This ought to be interesting. I, uh, I may have to take it into where I used to work, and I think they have a hydraulic press in there. Maybe we can get it out with that. Just press it on down through. Pretty sure that's the way it would be done. All right, you guys. Nobody reminded me to shake the, the chem dip. Got those bearings in there. I'm just going to shake it around quite a bit here, then put it back down where it was. Let it sit for another week. All right, let's wrap this video up with a couple of things here now. Between now and the next video, I will be clear coating all of these uh, bolts and nuts and everything. These four bolts that held the sway bar in, incidentally, uh, only two of them are the same. This one is long. I thought there was a long one and a short one, but it turns out no. Apparently, they used whatever they had. This one here has fine threads. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they boogered up the threads or not. Look at that. This one has fine threads. These two have coarse threads. And this one's a long one with coarse threads. So I'm going to see if I, I'm going to have to get down in there and scrape around, clean up, and see if these, I don't know, they, when they put this one in, they may have boogered up the threads. It requires coarse. <laughs> Never fails. Anyway, I'll give you an update on that later on. Also, uh, remember our broken piece on our keeper for our. Uh, strut arm. That's all that was left of it. Why they even put that back on the car is beyond me. That, that's as dumb as you can get. Anyway, I have. I took it into old Joe DeWalder, my buddy, and he made me a nice bracket. Uh, what instead of making me an entire bracket, he said I'll just go ahead and make an end for it, which he has done, and he welded it right on there, and it looks great, fits nice. He did a good job. So we're back in business on our on our little bracket there that our keeper that holds those. Large bolt heads. He did a good job. All right, and uh, these uh, alignment shims. Now, this car only had two alignment shims on that side over there. I think it was probably supposed to have more. I've already clear coated these because I don't want them to rust. They already had a little bit of surface rust on them, but uh, I tried to get it off with the buffer or the uh, wire wheel and everything. It didn't do much good. They just wouldn't come off. I soaked them for a while. No, I don't know what the deal was. It just wouldn't come off, so I went ahead and just clear coated them. And these, these alignment uh, shims will, uh, you can buy these now on Max Auto. They come in uh, 16th, 1 16th, 1 32nd, and 1 8th. These are your 1 8th, I think. And uh, I'm probably, before I take the car down to get the front end aligned, I'm probably going to pick up a couple of them for the uh, alignment guy down there because he's probably going to say, well, we don't have any of these. Actually, these look like different sizes. Looks like a 32nd, no, a 16th, and a uh, 1 8th. That's what we got here, probably... Probably a sixteenth and one eighth. Anyway, I'm going to pick them up a couple more. <coughs> they're only a couple of few dollars a piece, but in case he needs them, I'll just tell him, look, they're in the car, inside the car, in the console. Pull them out, use them as needed. Also, these bolts right here that held the caliper to the mounting bracket. Uh, originally, apparently, this was a the, they were this is what you call a uh, safety wire bolt, and they were the same on both sides of the car. So I guess it came out of the factory that way. The other ones weren't w worth nothing when I got done with them. They were just all worn away. So uh, I cleaned these up, and they seem to be all right. But, you know, I don't know. When they changed the brake shoes or did something to it, I'm not sure exactly what. They probably had to cut the, wire, the safety wire off. But these are safety wire bolts. I went out and bought a couple of different ones. I'm going to have to get a couple of lock washers. I I'm debating whether to just replace them with two more of these. And forget these. I don't know. I haven't quite figured that out yet. I may go back and probably just get these with new lock washers. 
and uh, just you know forget the whole thing. But everything's going to be kind of nice here when I get done to it. And uh, by the way, I have another request of my good subscribers out there <laughs> who have parts cars. This is the bracket that holds the this the front bracket that goes uh, underneath the fender and bolts to the body, and it holds the flexible brake hose. The, the, this is the hole that bolts it to the body with this bolt, and then uh, why am I out of focus here? And then uh, the brake. The brake hose goes through this hole and there's a lock key that goes on the other side to hold it in place. It, it was missing on the driver's side. The, they had used some kind of coat hanger wire or something <laughs> wrapped around a bolt head to hold the brake hose up against the body of the car. <laughs> if anybody has one of these from the driver's side car, the driver's side, this is the, this would be the passenger side. It goes on, I think, like this, like that. If anybody has a, a drive, one from the driver's side, I'd appreciate it. Let me know. I'll buy it from you. Pay for shipping and all that. Okay, uh, I think that's about it for now. We've got a couple more things I'm going to cover, and then we'll end this baby. Also, by next time, I hope to have this horizontal bar back on the upper control arm with the bushings, one on each end. They'll go on like that. We'll get that done. Remember, these are torqued to 25 foot-pounds, okay? And there's a distance between here and the edge of the of the upper control arm. It's in it's in the shop manual. But we determined last time, it doesn't say what it should be torqued to, it just says install it. But we determined last time, and I had, you know, read it by another uh, feller on the uh, Thunderbird forum. He stated 25 foot pounds, but he never said why. You know, he never went into detail on it. But now we know. Yeah, he was right. It is 25 foot pounds. So we're going to be doing that next time. Get that on the upper control arm, and then if we, you know, as soon as we get done with this, we're going to move into this. We're going to show you how to install inner and outer tie rod ends along with the adjustment sleeves on these two right here. We've got everything we need right there. So that ought to be fun. We'll just do one, and of course the other one will be exactly the same. And there's two or three ways to do that. It's kind of interesting. And if I still have time and energy and motivation, and I haven't caught the coronavirus, I'm going to try to actually put one of our shock absorbers on the driver's side back into the car. I'm glad everyone liked the last video uh, on the Thunderbird series, part 71, where we showcased the Thunderbirds belonging to our subscribers. I thought that was, uh, I, I was real happy to see that, you know, it was, it, it was greeted with, yeah, hey, that's a pretty good video. I was concerned about it, you know. Now, a couple of things have come up since then. Uh, I've been contacted by two people who have said that they had submitted photographs and a story on their Thunderbird, but I never got them. Or if I did, I don't know where they went. They just went off into the Netherlands or something. I don't know. Well, that bothers me. You know, we want to get everyone included. So what we're going to do, and, and kind of in, in a way, it's good. Uh, it's bad, but it's good. I've been thinking because it was, uh, you know, everybody enjoyed that video, seeing those other folks and their Thunderbirds. I was thinking maybe what we can do is send me what you got, you know, send me photographs. You saw what the others had done. Send me photographs, send me stories, and uh, just like you saw on 64, 65, 66 Thunderbirds only, currently owned. And what I will do is maybe every other video. I will include it as part of the, you know, the Thunderbird videos. That'd be kind of nice. So I'll put it maybe in the middle, maybe at the end, maybe at the front. I don't know. Whatever, whatever happens to suit my fancy at the time. So don't be afraid to send them, okay? And uh, I will include them. It may, it could go two videos before I include it. It could go one every single video. Uh, it could be once a month or once every fourth video, whatever, you know. <laughs> it, it's just the way it all works out. But, you know, we will get everybody's in there. Not a problem. Uh, there was a Pat D. who contacted me. I, you know, if you have sent me pictures of your Thunderbird prior to me putting up the video, uh, the last video, and, and you didn't say, use this in the video, I didn't use it. Uh, that's probably what happened to a couple of you there. 
uh, I didn't want to, you know, just be presumptuous. I want you to tell me it's okay to do that, you know. And then I will go ahead and do my best to, you know, make it look good and all that. Make you look good. I always look good. Buzz, he never looks good. Ugly guy. Jeez, annoys me. Anyway, let's do it that way, okay? Let's, uh, let, let's get everybody included. I'll, I'll continue putting them in as long as I get them. And if we get enough of them, I may, I may put two per video. I don't know, one in the front, one in the end. Who knows, you know, whatever it comes out as, okay? I hope that would make everybody happy. But if your video, if your uh, Thunderbird didn't get put in in that video, let's get them in the rest. It's no problem. Everybody's waiting to see them anyway, me in particular. I want to see them. They want to see them. And, of course, you want to see it on the video also. So, until next time, this is John.